I hope I'm still in recording. Can anyone see? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I saw that recording. <laughs> Otherwise, I may lose my video. Yeah. All right. C point one, search unordered arrays. The big topic, role of data structures in algorithms. Data structures, yeah, another topic, but it is very important in our algorithms class. Yeah. So here we need to spend some time study the data structures. And in this part, I just use a very simple example to show you the role, the importance of data structure. All right, so let's start our problem number three. Very simple, search an unordered array. Yeah. So you know, it's pretty easy. Unordered array, yeah. do the search, find given element. That simple. Yeah. Given an unordered array with indices from zero through n minus one and elements. Now we want to find the key capital K. Which element has contains has this key? Yeah. We need to find that index i such that k equals a of i. So simple, right? It's trivial. You can even say it is trivial, but here there, there are some basic concepts we can learn from this topic. Several fundamental basic concepts we can learn. First, we characterize this as one fundamental problem, algorithm, problem type, search type. We have three fundamental or basic problem types in algorithm. Search, sort, selection. Three types. Now, here, we look at the first type, search type. Data structure, very simple, array. We use the probably the simplest data structure, array. Okay, yeah. All right, so yeah. I'll give you the reference in the textbook here. Yeah, all right. So the question, why the data structures are important in algorithm design? The first question. Yeah, we know, people, everyone knows data structure they're very important, but why it is important, right? Why it is important? Yeah. Here, I just only want to tell you one sentence to tell you the importance. Organize the data. Through data structures, we can make our data well organized. Yeah. All right. If you do not use data structure, your data randomly arranged without any structure. No structure. So then, your algorithm cannot take advantage of the structure property. So that means your algorithms cannot go very far. You cannot apply many advanced algorithms. You can only apply relatively simple algorithms because the data is so messy so messy a lot of advanced method cannot be applied that's the reason but if you use some special data appropriate data structures to organize your data after that your data follow some special properties then your, then your algorithm can take advantage of those properties. Those properties. So then you can develop some really advanced, smart algorithms. That's the basic reason behind it. Okay. All right. So let's look at the solution. Solution should be very simple. Very straightforward. Huh. All right. Okay, yeah. All right. Analysis 
the basic operation for this question. We need to apply some basic operation. Here you can see we do not need addition, we do not need multiplication, right? But we need another commonly used basic operation comparison. We need to do comparison. Greater, less, or equal. <laughs> Greater, less, or equal. That kind of comparison. Okay, all right. So now compare K and A of I. Yeah. You start I from zero. Yeah. So you just write a for loop. You can easily go through, you compare one by one uh, in sequence from beginning to end. Right? How simple it is. If K equals A of I returns index I, the function, the search function, your search function returns index I. If not equal, then, all right, you do iterations, you compare A and A, uh, K and A of I plus one, now keep doing iterations like this, yeah, return minus one if you reach the end, because the index of the last element equals N minus one. After you hit the last element, still not equal, still not equal, return negative one. So when you see negative one, you know the search fails. Yeah. That's a result, that's an outcome. Yeah, all right, okay. yeah. So that's simple, yeah. So here our focus, not here, because this is so easy, yeah. So our focus, and other parts. Yeah. So we, we want to use this one to learn some basic concepts. Yeah. First, this algorithm we call a sequential search or linear search. Yeah. People use these two names frequently. Yeah. Sequential search, or some people like to call linear search. Linear, okay? Yeah, follow the line, so linear search, sequential search. All right, here the first question we want to answer, how do we measure its performance? Efficiency, performance, how fast? You, if you want to tell people how fast this algorithm is, you need to find a measure for it. Yeah. So the, this question we need to answer. Performance measure or efficiency measure here. Yeah. Count the number of comparisons. Yeah. Here, the basic operation is the comparison, so we just count the number of comparisons we need. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so here, let us count in this way. All right? Yeah. If k equals the first element, number comparison one. If k equals the second element, two comparisons, and so on. Okay? The last one, you need n comparisons. No match, n comparisons. No. So here you can see, if k equals the last element, you need n comparisons. But if there is no match, also n comparisons. You need to go do the comparison for all the elements. Then you can say no match. No. All right. Next, some basic concepts introduced here. First, if k equals a of zero, the first element, we call it the best case. Yeah. Because for this case, we use the smallest number of comparisons, only one. So we call the best case for this sequential search algorithm one comparison. All right, yeah. Then the last two cases, the worst case, and comparisons. Yeah. Two concepts, best case and the worst case concept. 
Okay? For different situation, we need to use different type efficiency measure. Yeah, efficiency measure here. Yeah, best case and the worst case. All right. Now the next, the most important question for this part. How to measure the overall efficiency? Overall efficiency. Yeah. Best case. Can you use best case as overall? No, we cannot. Because that's a single one. All the other cases do worse than that. Can you use the worst case to measure overall efficiency? Still not. Two, yeah. Two uh, pessimists, right? Yeah, best case, too optimistic, right? Too optimistic. Yeah, not as good as that, right? So you need to find some fair way to measure overall performance, efficiency. Yeah, not the best case, not the worst case. Measure should include all the cases. You need to factor in all the cases in a fair way, right? Fair way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here, let us. We need to make some assumption here. Yeah. yeah. It's a little more complicated. We need to make some assumption here. Yeah. Assumption is. Yeah. Each case. Do you have? Do we have any information about how frequently these cases happen? We don't have that information. How frequent they happen. So that information we need to put into assumption. Assume these cases have the same probability. Yeah. In general, yeah, we can we assume that. Yeah. 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 But the probability for for yeah. Index case, yeah. Your function return an index. Your function return negative one. Yeah. yeah, so here. Match case, there is a match, no match case, right? These two cases. We need to assume some probability here. We need to use little p to represent. There is a match. All right, yeah, probability. Then, it's complement net minus one case complement of that one minus p the probability. Yeah. That's our assumption. With this assumption, then we can write overall efficiency. We can write the formula for the overall. Yeah. Otherwise, if you do not have this information, how can you write it? Yeah. How can you use a fair way to write it? All right, yeah. So next, 